Guys, I'm in Boston and we're gonna look at a unicorn in just about a moment here. We're gonna be looking at a machine that is very specifically built and that's developed for tight urban sites. I think this machine that we're looking at behind me is going to be a municipality's dream machine. I think for utility companies that work where space is limited, they're gonna end up loving this thing. But this is not a brand new machine by any means. This thing has been around for a while. We're gonna to talk to people that know a whole lot more about it than I do. Jeffrey, what are we looking at with this thing? So right here where you're looking at our 12 MTX. So this is our hybrid loader excavator. So it's really designed to do both roads extremely effectively on site. Both act as a, a wheel loader and act as an excavator. So you can see there's an articulating chassis, which is completely different from everything else out there. So the chassis itself articulates right in the center, just like, like a wheel loader. Just like a wheel loader, exactly. Okay, it's got a boom arm like an excavator, yep. except you guys stuck the boom arm on the wrong side of the cab. Well, actually, it's on the right side. Everybody else is wrong. Okay, okay. But what was, what's the point? Why would you do something like that? So, for the operator, from the operator's perspective, you're exiting on the side of the curb. So if you look at traffic flow, what's happening is the cab being on the right-hand side. When the operator exits the cab, he's right to the sidewalk, so he's safe. Okay, so let's just say something. You're talking about when you're working on a street, when you're working next to a sidewalk, when you're working in an urban setting. So this machine was really designed to work in the inner city. Absolutely. So this isn't a machine that when guys look at this, it's not really designed to go out into the middle of a, a land development project and try to compete with a big tracked excavator. Well, you see, so that's the thing. So we're talking about a 12 ton machine. In those big land developments, you're talking about 20, 30 ton machines. No, that's not the role of this machine. This is your on-site do everything machine. It's not just a wheel loader. It's not just an excavator. You can see here we're lifting. So guys who will do utility work, catch basins, culverts, uh, that kind of thing. Very easy for this machine to do. And it's optimized to do that because there's holding valves on every one of the cylinders as well. Okay. This is actually, when it was built, it was meant to replace a backhoe, a loader, a compact excavator and be a one and you're kind of done type of a machine, but it's not meant to be as efficient as a wheel loader, mm -hmm. right? I mean, cause you said this to me off camera, you're like, right. it's not gonna outwork that wheel loader in an aggregate pit by any means. No. But it's gonna allow a person to bring one machine to that street job or wherever they're doing that job and load a truck efficiently. Absolutely. It's going to be able to dig a ditch. It's going to be able to, to drive a log, a road line, and, yep. and cut vegetation. Absolutely. It's going to be able to do a lot of different things that would otherwise require two or three machines to do otherwise. Absolutely. Okay. So, so your premise is, is, is perfect right there. So we're consolidating several machines into one. And a, another factor which makes this machine more and more attractive to contractors and, and municipalities and stuff like that is that Qualified operators, qualified labor that actually still want to operate machinery, that's coming harder and harder to come by. Okay. What are we looking at, Jeffrey? So the thing is, is that we can use this bucket because the angle that we can get with it, we can pick up material in the corner of the bucket, funnel it to the corner of the bucket. You can fill a wheelbarrow if you want. Or if the bucket's wider than the back of the truck and you load it to the back of the truck, you lift it up, you give it an angle, so your dump width is less than the box of the truck. So you can dump right into the truck, even though you've got a super wide bucket. But this isn't a new machine. It's not like this is the first time you guys have ever built one and are just bringing it around. This, Mechalac itself is not a new company. It's new to North America, but it's not new to the world. In That's fact, not... Mechalac has been around since the 70s, I believe. Yeah, 74, yeah, officially. Yeah. 74, so that means you guys have been in business almost 50 years. Mm -hmm. In a couple months, it'll be your 50 year anniversary. Absolutely. And it's, you're just finally coming to North America now. Mm -hmm. Why? Well, you see, that's the thing. Here in North America, 
our processes, well, I mean, let's call them dated, you know? Uh, because what's happening is, is we've got lots of space here. We have lots of uh, labor and manpower were super easy to come by. Resources were super easy to come by. Uh, but the thing is, is that right now, all that, the environment is changing. So what we're finding now is uh, real estate. Prices are skyrocketing, right? So land developers are building tighter and higher. So this machine was born in that kind of environment. There was not necessarily a need for it before, but there definitely is now. Okay, so let's just say, I'm, I'm just looking at this thing going, okay, Mechlec, why Mechlec? Why not John Deere? Why would I go with Cat? Why wouldn't I go with somebody else? Uh, because of parts availability, that would scare the crap out of me. What if this machine breaks down? What am I going to do? So oh, well, how, do, how have you guys addressed that issue? So our main warehouse is here in Norfolk, Massachusetts. So we have parts on hand, parts on the shelf. All right, guys, I am inside Mechalex United States headquarters with Peter Bigwood. He's the actual manager for Mechalex in North America. And you have how many parts available? Oh, we have, we have $2.6 million worth of parts right here in Norfolk, Mass. Okay, so that's impressive, but that's not what impressed me the most. You said that if you didn't have a part available, you would be willing to cannibalize one of your machines that's oh, yeah. not sold to make sure that somebody that's got a machine that's out there operating can stay working. That's, yeah, uh, it's, it's uh, embarrassing to admit in, in a way, we, you know, you obviously would rather have the part on, on hand, but if you don't, if for whatever reason you don't, yeah, we are willing to do that. I wouldn't be embarrassed to say that. I'd be proud <laughs> to say that. I mean, you know what? It's more important to keep a guy working sure. that's got a machine to pay for yeah. than let a machine sit there and make a guy wait because that's what other companies do. Yeah. They, that's what they do. Uh, the other thing is parts is great. You know, the dealer network can uh, contribute to you know keeping the guys up and running. But if they don't have the technical support, it's basically for naught. So we have field service engineers on hand, ready to act with the dealers, and if they occasionally even act directly with the customer, we will send them out to help support the dealers in their effort to get the customer up and running. So you've got, if I understood this right, because I'm asking all these questions off camera and I'm trying to learn as I go, you've got over $2.3 million worth of spare parts on hand, mm -hmm. which is... And that's aside from what's in stock at the dealers too. That's impressive. I mean, that doesn't really rock my boat. Mm -hmm. But what did actually rock my boat is I heard that no matter what, you guys would be willing to cannibalize one of your own machines to help keep somebody that buys one of your machines mm -hmm. in operation. Absolutely. Absolutely. We've done it in the past and we'll do it again. All right. So you're going to walk us through what this machine can do? Absolutely. All right. Let's check it out more. Perfect. So this is our Mechalac 12 MTX. 12 normally refers to uh, the weight class of the machine. So we've named it a 12 ton because it operates uh, as well as any 12 ton out there, but it's actually a nine and a half ton machine. This machine weighs 19,000 pounds, mm -hmm. but will do the same work as a 24,000 pound machine. Is that right? Absolutely. So you'll notice that it's set up completely different than any other wheeled excavator out there. So you see the articulating chassis right there. Uh -huh. And that's because it's our hybrid loader slash excavator slash telehandler slash on-site heavy lift crane. So that enables us to get around uh, uh, corners really, really tight. As long as your front wheel hub clears, the rest of the machine clears. Uh, there's loader functionality inside the machine. It's just a switch. I want to be a loader, click on the loader. All right, well, let's see it. This step will deploy and retract automatically, which is a really, really cool feature. So you see the operating modes right here. So this is park. This is dig for when you want to be an excavator. This is loader mode for when you want to be a loader. And click, this is road mode. So all your joysticks, the functionality is canceled. It's locked out, okay. Yep. Okay, okay, okay. So what do you mean? When you want to be an excavator, you click the button and you're an excavator. What, what does that even mean when you're inside of the cab? So right now your joysticks will function like any ISO patterned excavator. And, you know, for, um, for the veterans out there, if uh, you want to operate an SAE pattern, it's three clicks in the menu. 
and you're operating like a like a backhoe. Like a backhoe. Exactly. Like, exactly. Yep. like the us older school there guys. There you go. I said veteran, but <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Well, that's me. That's All me. right. All right. So yeah, so basically, uh, so you're an excavator. If you want to optimize it towards being a loader, you do click. And what happens is is the machine will configure itself. This cylinder right here will be active for loading. Your FNR is right here, forward, neutral, reverse. Okay. Right there. Pull back to pick up your boom, push forward to dump it, pick up, dump. Just so, like a wheel loader. So now just like a wheel loader here, uh, and do you have the capability of steering like a wheel loader here Absolutely. or controlling it over here no, like a wheel loader? It's done at the steering wheel. So it's done at the steering yep. wheel because there are some wheel loaders that are pure joystick. Yep, no. Nope. This, not... this one here is uh, at the wheel. Okay. And you'll notice the two pedals. So one is your inching pedal and one is your brake pedal. They both, they both basically have the same function. But a wheel loader, when you hit the inching pedal, it'll kick out the transmission and allows you to rev your engine so your your hydraulic function can be uh, can be quicker. Can okay, so you can maintain power to your hydraulic Absolutely. function. Okay. Yep. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Good. Now you yep. said it's got a 115 horsepower Deutz engine. 115 horsepower. So you got your master cut off here. That's really really cool because it's locked away. If you store the period the machine for extended periods of time, you're not drawing a battery down. Fuel pump. Okay. So you can actually fuel the machine. So you have a fuel pump right there. So you take that this hose right here, you stick it in your jerry can, and you can fuel the machine all by itself. If you you're, if you're using a jerry can, but otherwise yep. you got your regular fuel, your fuel right gap here. Is okay, right okay, there. okay. Exactly. Huh. So that's nice and neat. Tucked away right back there. Trailer hitch, because the guys in here sometimes tow trailers with these things. Well, the guys here are starting to tow a lot too. Okay. And there's a major advantage to that because you're taking all your stuff to site. All, all under your own power. Yep. So you can bring a trailer with you to keep all of your attachments. So you, if you're gonna br be bringing different size buckets with, you can bring everything you need, barricades, whatever you want. You just tow it to the site yep. and it's gonna go 20 miles an hour down the road, roughly. 20 miles an hour down the road. So when you get to site, let's say you have multiple accessories, you swing around, you connect, disconnect, everything is nice and tight. You don't have to stage stuff all over the site. Let's say you bring material with it, aggregates or whatever. You know, let's say you bring in a truck, you have to dump, you have to clean up what's left, etc., etc. Now it stays in the trailer, you show up, you do your work, and you leave. I know guys, and I mean, some of you guys probably are like, oh, who is this meant for? Tony Corella, Spaghetti, Tony Spaghetti Corella in St. Paul. He runs St. Paul Utilities. He just drives a backhoe to and from sites, and I was just like, you're freaking crazy, but that's why we call you Tony Spaghetti Corella. And I'm um, looking at this machine going, this is so smart for a small utility company, a guy that doesn't want to have a trailer. It just exactly. it just works. Exactly, because you can't tow with a backhoe. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, the road speed and the road banners are there with this machine. Plus the versatility just like blows a backhoe out of the water, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So Deutz 3.6 liter engine, 115 horsepower. Uh, this unit does have def because it's 115 horsepower. Yep. Uh, but for colder climates, what we do is we'll pump the def of the lines when the engines shut down. So that mitigates the risk of it freezing in the lines. Down here, we have our three pump system. So it's important to mention that because one pump is for the drive, one pump is for the hydraulics, and one pump is dedicated to the auxiliary hydraulics, 37 gallons a minute. So you're never compromising? Never. So if you're running a forestry head, Mm -hmm. If you're running a mulcher, you'll reach out, the mulcher head will not slow down. So you can do your swing maneuvers, you can come in, come back, and that head will never slow down. So it's like having those backpack units on your excavator, except now it's integrated into the machine and you haven't paid 40,000 bucks extra. Oh no, those cost way more than $40,000, sir. We're talking $250,000 for a good, for a good uh, super pack on the oh. back of an excavator. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah I've ran one. I ran one in Florida. Yeah, they're, it's insane. And you guys solved that problem just by sticking an extra pump on. Oh, wow, okay. And as we go around to the front, what are we looking at? So we have a storage compartment right here. So again, what they've done is they've tried to maximize every little aspect of this machine. Side view camera, storage right here. I want to bring your attention to the boom because we can see really, really well here. That cylinder back here is what lifts the boom. This one? That one right there. So you see the linkage, the way it's made. So that cylinder is pushing and it's on working on the strong side. So when you're lifting the boom, that linkage right there is what pulls the boom up and back. So it is super strong for lifting. So you have two of them though. You've got one here and then this one here. So those work in unison? 
Uh, well, exactly. So that so this will be your boom control. So when you pull on your right hand joystick, that's yep. what lifts your boom. Okay. And then that one will work on the pedal on the floor. So you control those independently. So that gives you access to cinematics that other machines just do not have. It also favors your weight bias. So when you're doing material handling, you get your boom all the way out over the machine, right above your center joint, and it becomes part of the machine ballast. So it contributes to your lifting capacity. And plus when you're lifting this kind of load, you don't have to use your boom. You use that cylinder. And again, look at how it's placed. It's optimized for perfect lifting capability. What do you call that? So you can put a platform on it, you know, if you have a blow a boom, you blow a hose, it's not, everything's not gonna collapse and yeah. kill somebody. Some people call them burst valves. We call them uh, uh, safety valves, pilot pressure operated holding valves. Holding so, valves. Yeah, yes, exactly. Yeah, okay, so you blow so, a hose, it stays right where it's at. Exactly, so some excavators will have it just on the boom section. Yep. This one has it on every single cylinder on the machine. So no matter where you are in the lifting cycle, let's say you're on site, demolition's going on, piece of debris comes, Cuts a hose, your boom stays where it is. Which also, but that also allows you to use this like a telehandler. Absolutely. And that's that's the thing. So right now I could do static loading just like a telehandler would. I can take my load, reach out 23 feet, come back, reach up 23 feet. But what a, tele, a telehandler can't do is reach below grade. I can go about 10 feet below grade drop this pallet, come back out of it, and go. And go on angles. And do angles as well. Because of your 15 degree right boom right here. Exactly. Right? So you can go sideways like this, straighten your boom out, and, the, mm -hmm. and you can have a guy at a platform here, he can be doing siding on the side of a house or Absolutely. whatever, I don't pick something. Absolutely. Absolutely. Huh. So the versatility of this machine, it, it, it basically blows everything else out of the water out there. You know, so we were saying, why is this machine, uh, why are we ready to roll this machine out on the North American market? Labor is super hard to come by. Yep. You can't have multiple machines on site anymore. It's the guy that shows up with one machine that can do everything that gets the job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, if you guys are finding it harder to find good guys, qualified help that wants to put their boots on every single morning, well, join the freaking crowd because you're competing with everybody else that wants to hire those guys and those guys know it and they're starting to charge more and more and more. Absolutely. And so if you can, I mean, they're not, they're not around. So if you can find them, good for you, but if you can't find them, mm -hmm. well, then you gotta replace them with something that is a, a one and you're done. So you're basically, you built a machine to eliminate a loader and a backhoe and an excavator and you put them all into one. Now you're not saying though, let's so get this straight. You're not saying- Don't forget the material handling aspect of it though. On site, we can replace whatever uh, those 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 smaller telehandlers can do. Okay, but off camera, you admitted that this machine, although you, you it's got a loader function, it's not going to outcompete a loader like that in an aggregate pit. It's not designed no. to be in here just loading semis all day long. No, but I mean, in theory, it could one yard at a time or one and a half yards at a time. If you're using light materials or you're doing snow removal, mm -hmm. you can absolutely do that. But yes. That's a dedicated loader. It does that very well. But then again, remember that the North American market, we've worked a lot with dedicated machines, one trick ponies. My excavator, it works really good at digging. My skid loader, it works really good at doing this. Yep. Uh, my telehandler works really, really good at doing that. But now you wind up with three, four, five machines on site, no operators to run them, yep. and you're out of pocket a ton of money. Yep. So this machine consolidates all that into one machine. You show up, you're a one man show, Connection disconnection cycles on the connect, it's five seconds. You drop your forks, go grab your loader bucket, load a truck, stop loading the truck, come back, grab your forks, place whatever you need to do. Okay, I need to dig a hole, drop your forks, grab your excavation bucket, go dig. Huh. Mechalac boom arm design allows it to dig parallel with the machine so you're no longer straddling the machine. But mechalac has gone even a little bit further with this. They have a quick disconnect and connect series that I'm showing you right here. But if you don't want to use their proprietary attachments, you don't have to because you can attach into a universal skid steer attachment plate like this one and be back in business with any attachment you Enjoy already own. demonstrating the new open cab design of the Mechalac. <laughs> Heck yeah.
<laughs> making it way easier. <laughs> All right, you guys. Well, we've covered a lot of ground, and one of the things that I will say is I don't think we're doing this video justice in any way, shape, or form, or this machine justice in any way, shape, or form. There's too many things that we could show that it could do, but not really effectively demonstrate how efficiently it could do it. Mm -hmm. I kind of feel like we skimmed the book, we read the front cover, we read the back cover, but we didn't get into any of the chapters of the actual what this machine's capable of. That's just my gut. It's a, it's a story that's waiting to be discovered. You know, that's the thing. It's a tool carrier, it's a loader, it's an excavator, it's whatever you want it to be. It's a telehandler, it's a, it's a forklift, it's a rough terrain uh, crane, you know? So it can be whatever you want it to be. With the proper accessories, have it do anything. So I'm gonna ask you guys that have maybe ran Mechalac in the past, what is your experience with it? And if you've ran one of these, you know, maybe one of the other Mechalac MCRs or any of the other machines that you guys have out there that are similar but different than this, tell me what you've done with it and what you what your experience is with it. Because yeah. you've, got, you've got a few guys out there that actually run these things for Luke, you guys. Luke Parmenter out in Washington, Ben Kananaka out in Maine. These guys are very vocal owners on the machines. They love them and they're always willing to help a guy out, you know. Send them a comment, ask them questions. They're more than happy to answer. Mechalock.com is our corporate website and we have our own Instagram page, uh, Mechalock North America. All right, and that's going to cut this one. God bless. Go get them, you guys. We'll catch you on another one.